In this problem, we need to solve the following system of linear equations using Gaussian elimination with back substitution. And here is our system. Well, Gaussian elimination is when we do row operations on the augmented matrix, and our goal is to get the matrix to look like this, and this is row echelon form. We want to have ones on the leading diagonal and we need zeros below that. So the first thing we need to do is write our augmented matrix. Is the system set up correctly? X's, Y's, Z's equals constants. Yes, everything's set up correctly. So we're ready to write our augmented matrix. So stripping off the coefficients, I'm going to get negative 2 negative 3, negative 4, then my vertical bar and my constant on the other side of 1. Row 2, negative 1, negative 4, positive 3, and negative 7. And row 3 is going to be 3, 8, negative 4, and 15. So we have our augmented matrix. And now the first thing we need is a 1 in row 1, column 1. I don't have that, but do I have a 1 in this first column? Close, I have a negative 1. So I think what I'm going to do to try and avoid fractions is I'm going to swap out row 1 and row 2 and then multiply the first row by negative 1. That will give me this desired 1. So I'm going to do row 1 interchange with row 2. And so my new row 1 is going to be negative 1, negative 4, 3, and negative 7. My new row 2 is my old row 1, so it's negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, 1. Row 3 stays the same at 3, 8, negative 4, and 15. So now I'm going to have to multiply row 1 by negative 1 to get my leading term to be a 1. So my instructions are going to say negative 1 times row 1, put it in row 1. So all I'm going to do when I multiply a row by a negative 1 is it just will flip all my signs. So I'm going to get 1, 4, negative 3, and positive 7. Row 2 and 3 are going to stay exactly as they are, so let me write them out quickly. So I've got the 1 in the first position. That is done. I'm happy with row 1, so I won't change it from this point on. So in my next matrix, I already know that row 1 is going to be 1, 4, negative 3, and 7. Now I need to get zeros below that. The way we get zeros is we take the element that you turned into a 1, and you multiply this row by the opposite of this number. So to make the negative 2 a 0, the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. So I'm going to do 2 times row 1 plus row 2, and I'm going to put it in row 2. To help me reduce arithmetic errors, I'm going to do some scratch work for this step. So I'm going to write 2 times row 1, and I'm going to add row 2 to it. So I need to do 2 times this row, so 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and 2 times 7 is 14. Then we need to write row 2 underneath it, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and 1, and then we add them up. 2 minus 2 gives me my 0, 8 minus 3 is 5, 
Negative 6 added to negative 4 is negative 10, and 14 plus 1 is 15. So that is my new row 2. 0, 5, negative 10, and 15. So now I've got the 0 below the 1. I need to get a 0 below that, and we're going to do it by the same basic process. What's the opposite of 3? Negative 3. I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 3. I'm going to add it to row 3 and put the answer in row 3. Sorry for my terrible handwriting. So now I'm going to have to do some scratch work again. Now I'm multiplying by negative 3. I have negative 3 row 1 and I'm going to add it to row 3. Negative 3 times 1, negative 3. Negative 3 times 4, negative 12. Negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. Now let's write row 3 underneath it, and then you're going to add these two rows together. Negative 3 and 3 gives me my desired 0. Negative 12 and 8 is negative 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. And negative 21 plus 15 is negative 6. So that is my new row 3. 0, negative 4, 5, and negative 6. So I'm running out of room. I need to go to the next page. I copied the last matrix from the previous slide, and remember the last thing we did was to get this to be a zero, so I've taken care of that step. The next thing I need to do is you go down the leading diagonal, and I need a one in row two, column two. That's where the five is. If this negative four had been a one, I could easily switch those two rows, but it's not. But we're lucky we can still avoid fractions because every element in row 2 is a multiple of 5. So I'm just going to multiply my row 2 by 1 fifth, and I'm going to put it in row 2. Row 1 is going to stay the same. 1, 4, negative 3, and 7. And row 3 is going to stay the same. 0, negative 4, 5, and negative 6. Row 2 is 1 fifth of the old row 2. Most people don't like multiplying by 1 fifth, but remember that's the same as dividing by 5. So 0 divided by 5 is 0. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. So there's my new matrix. So I've done this. Now I need a 0 below that. Now you might be tempted in this example because you have 4 and negative 4. You go, oh boy, I can get my 0. But if I added these two rows together and tried to put it in row 3, I'd get a 0 here, but I get 1 plus 0, which is 1, in this position. So it would undo some of the previous work. So I can't do that. The thing we have to do is you take the thing you got to be a 1, you multiply it by the opposite of this number. Well, what's the opposite of negative 4? It is positive 4. So I'm going to do 4 times row 2, add it to row 3, and I'm going to put it in row 3. Row 1 stays the same. Row 2 stays the same. And now for our scratch work for the third row, we need to take 4 times row 2. So that's 4 times this row here. So 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 1 is 4. 
4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and 4 times 3 is 12. Then we're going to write row 3 directly below it, and we get 0, negative 4, 5, and negative 6. Add them together. My first element is still a 0. 4 minus 4, that gives me the 0 I'm aiming for. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3, and 12 minus 6 is 6. So my new row 3 is 0, 0, negative 3, and 6. So I've got that 0. The last thing I need to do is go down the leading diagonal and get a 1 in this position. That means where the negative 3 is. And when you're in the last row, the only way to get a 1 is to multiply this whole row by negative 1 third. So I'm going to do negative 1 third row 3, and I'm going to put it in row 3. Row 1 stays the same. Row 2 stays the same. And row 3 is, well, I'm going to be dividing by negative 3. 0 divided by negative 3 is 0. 0 divided by negative 3 is 0. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is positive 1. And 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So now I'm finally in row echelon form. So now we're ready to do back substitution. So I'm going to write my equations. Remember, x, y, z equals constants. So I have x plus 4y minus 3z equals 7. Second one, no x, 1y, so just plain old y, minus 2z equals 3. Believe it or not, that was a 2. Last row, no x, no y, 1z, or just plain old z, equals negative 2. Well, I found z. Back substitution says take that value and put it in the equation above it, which is y minus 2 times z is negative 2 equals 3. So y, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 equals 3. Subtract 1, uh, sorry, subtract 4 from both sides. I get y equals 3 minus 4 is negative 1. I have y, and now we take both of those values and put them into the very first equation. Hopefully I'll have enough room to work on this. So I have x plus 4 times y, which is negative 1, minus 3 times z, which is negative 2, equals 7. So x minus 4 plus 6, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, equals 7, negative 4 Added to 6 is 2, so x plus 2 equals 7. Subtract 2 from both sides, x equals 5. So I've solved my system, and if I want to write it as an order triple, triple x comes first, 5, negative 1 for y is next, and finally z is negative 2. So there's the solution as an ordered triple.